This part of the PowerPoint is going to show you how to make bubble diagrams and then we're going to use our bubble guide diagrams to make our sketches and we're going to start working on designing our house that you're going to be designing for Habitat for Humanity. You already have your client survey so you already know what the requirements are as far as number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, and that sort of thing that you need. <clears throat> so how to begin. If you're saying you want to do a one-story dwelling and we already know how many people live in our house, you need to start thinking about what items you want to put in there. We've also looked at floor plans and seen good and bad things about floor plans. And we've already put information in about good floor plan design. We've glued that in. So you might want to look at that page as well. So here this guy is thinking about doing a one bedroom house for a single one person. And he says, well, he wants to put a great room. That's like a family room, living room, whatever you call it. So he thinks that he wants that to be the center focus. And then he says, maybe he wants to have a front porch or balcony. You can put porches on your house. They do not, in, they, porches do not count in your limited square feet. And then he says, he wants to have a large master bedroom. So he puts a large master bedroom over here. And he wants to put it in the back away from the porch. And he says that a bathroom, there should also be a bathroom attached right off of the master bedroom. But he says, well, if I put it like this, he still needs one bathroom that goes right off of the great room. You don't want to have the only bathroom in your house be where someone has to go through the master bedroom over to the bath. So he decides maybe instead of putting it there, he's going to connect it like this. What that's saying is there's a door connecting from the great room into the bathroom, and there's another one connecting here. That means that this can be your only bathroom in the house. He's saying that he's going to put a large closet there, and by touching both this and this, it shows that it's going to connect to both of those rooms. And then he says he needs to add a kitchen and an area for a dining room. Notice he's only connect to the great room, so that's what they're connecting off of. They don't connect to the master bedroom. This is called a bubble diagram. It shows us which rooms are connected to which, and it also shows us the relative size of the rooms. If you look at this, you can tell that the biggest room is the great room. We'd also notice that the bathroom is about the same size as the closet. And the combined size of the bathroom and the closet are about the same size as the master bedroom. You might also notice that basically the closet is almost as big as the dining room. This would be appropriate if you're going to put a big closet in. It may be that that's not your plan and you want a much smaller closet, in which case this would be much smaller. So the size of these is very important because it tells us how big your rooms are going to be compared to one another. And then the placement, if the circles are touching, it shows us which ones are connected. You're now going to end the video, and you're going to make two different bubble diagrams. <clears throat> They're going to show two different possible floor layouts of what you have in mind for your drawing. You're going to bring them to me to check them, and we're going to have a discussion on why you made different choices on your bubble diagrams. You are allowed to make one, bring it to me, and have me check it, and make suggestions before you bring me the second one then we'll have you choose which one you're going to use for your final project or at that point we'll have you make a third one that's really the one you're going to use for the final project. Okay, make two diagrams. You should make the diagrams in your engineering notebook.